Hello everyone, Juxtaposition here. Today's talk, we're going to um, connect some more dots. That's what I do. And because we're dealing with a concealment surveillance world where they want to know what you're doing, but they don't want you to know what they're doing. Right? In other words, they're uh, guerrillas by night, not armies by day. John Kennedy warned us on April 27, 1961, at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City, he said to the room of CIA-controlled media, press club, fake writers, in other words, writers of fake stories, um, that uh, we were confronted with a monolithic force that used covet means and enormous resources to uh, control us. And um, what he didn't say, but what he meant to say, was that uh, there is no United States of America. There never was. It was a psychops. Um, we operate under admiralty or maritime law. In other words, we're all on a big fat ship and the captain's in charge. And we follow orders or people die. That's martial law. That's how you can evoke mandates. Because you can't evoke mandates if you live in a um, democratic republic, which is formulated based on a constitutional law framework, uh, along with um, addendums such as the Bill of Rights. It would be impossible to do um, mandates, otherwise known as ultimatums. That's un-American. Conceptually, it's un-American. But America has never, ever followed constitutional law. And there isn't a single judge at the Supreme Court or at superior courts throughout our land that understands the Constitution of the United States. And the reason they don't understand it is they don't follow it. They follow admiralty law. And they follow orders or they get whacked or one of their children does. So they're completely compromised. So the whole idea of having law schools in the United States is, of course, a fraud. It's a fraud. And it's a fraud that's even larger than the FTX cryptocurrency fraud, which is also a psychops and a financial terrorism event. Okay, so for all you young people out there, I really want you to listen up here. It's, real, it's really important you understand that nothing today that is happening in your world is new. Not a damn thing is new. It's all been done repeatedly, rinse and repeat repeatedly for the last 2,000 years, okay? It's been done with the Roman Catholic Church, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. And I'm here to tell you that the holy waters of Our Lady of Lords cannot wash away all the felonious sins that have been committed, murders, fraud, um, intimidation instead of free choice, you can't wash that away with holy water, which I think we all know is toxic wastewater. All right. Got some facts, some fun facts. First of all, back to FTX. All right. I was uh, over there at the, um, you know, mentally challenged uh, facility at um, Google YouTube, and I am astounded, but I guess I shouldn't be by the number of people that really want to go after Sam Bankman Fried and um, little Caroline um, Ellison, Susan Atkins look-alike. Uh, the reason why the media foists these scapegoats up there, you know, at age 30, age 28, and of course they were 24 and 26 when this whole scam was hatched, um, as if they're Dr. Evil in a cave somewhere in an underground lair, the reason that the media focuses on the scapegoats is because it works. People were stupid enough to believe that Susan Atkins, that Susan Atkins, who's 21 years old with a nine-month-old little baby boy, could pick up an M7 bayonet from NATO forces and go over and stab five people 102 times. 102 times. Do the math on that. All right, and not harm 19-year-old pool boy William Garrickson and his three dogs. So that's four living creatures, four, on the property, unharmed. And everybody else got bayoneted 102 times. Then, the next day, go on and tag team and let Leslie Van Houten do it. 51 bayonet strikes of two people, 
one of whom's a military policeman, 235 pounds, six feet tall, with six loaded guns in the house. How does it? How does she do it? How do these little 21, and Leslie was only 19, age 19. See, this is a theme that these little 19 to 21 year old little girls, some with children, um, can go over and blow up FTX. It's impossible. It could never happen in real life. Charlie Manson couldn't do it with no bank account, no job, no driver's license, no automobile. Oh, they borrowed the automobile. Oh, really? And they had an eight, age 18, 19 taxi driver named L uh, Linda Kasabian whose husband worked for the CIA <laughs> and was in, was in Rio de Janeiro when the murder trial was put on that, you know, Robert Kasabian leaves town. That's a CIA colony, Rio de Janeiro, in case you didn't know. It is. Uh, it, you know, Jim Jones had a home there. Jennifer O'Neill had a home there. Jennifer O'Neill, you know, married and divorced seven times, Hollywood starlet. She came from Rio de Janeiro. That is a CIA colony over there. And that's a revolving door for Los Angeles spooks. Rio de Janeiro, check it out. Anyway, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, even the people that go down the rabbit hole with all of these, you know, diversion distractions to keep your eyes away from NATO forces and Agenda 21 and one world order and one world army and one banking system for the whole world. That's the plan, people. One world order. No democracy. Admiralty law. Maritime law. We follow orders from the authority or people die. Pretty simple math. I can assure you that all the people involved with the clandestine services and all the executives of all the corporations in America and all the hedge funds, all the nefarious hedge funds and all the nefarious endowment funds, which are actually money laundering facility adjuncts to the banking system, hiding in plain view, they understand that we follow orders or people die because they all knew who Abigail Folger was. She was, she was nobility class. And she got whacked by the M7. So believe me, bankers understand, they understand how an M7 bayonet works. And they understand that uh, children that go to the Dominican Academy in Spooksville, Monterey, can be murdered. You know, Patricia Hurst went to that school and she got kidnapped at age 19 from the University of California at Berkeley campus. Off campus, but close to campus, very close walking distance close to the uh, Newman Hall Roman Catholic Church, too. She's very close to that. I think she's one and a half blocks from the Roman Catholic Church. And she also went to that Crystal uh, Springs Academy, you know, where Paul Pelosi uh, was in that terrible car crash that killed his older brother David in 1956 on Skyline Boulevard near the Crystal Springs Reservoir. It's also where um, Sam Bankman went to school. Sam Bankman Freed, he went to school where Patricia Hearst went to school, which is one school away from where Charles Ng went to the Notre Dame school, which is in close proximity to the Crystal Greiser Academy. These schools are all implicated. That's the Sacred Heart Convent at 2222 Broadway, you know, where Diane Feinstein, a Jewish girl, went to a very strict Roman Catholic school a few blocks away from the Army Presidio base where Sharon Tate's father worked in later years, where Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi moved into Presidio Heights adjacent to the Presidio. And by the way, the, the Pacific Heights neighborhood where the infamous fake attack, hammer attack uh, with a styrofoam hammer, I guess, for Paul Pelosi, that's adjacent to the Presidio also. Presidio Heights, Pacific Heights, both are um, attached to the Presidio which has now been uh, decommissioned. That's the uh, bioweapons lab and uh, Letterman Hospital, bioweapons lab and acute care hospital. And um, it's right there where Haight-Ashbury is, where St. Ignatius Parish is, where, um, where University of San Francisco Jesuit is, where Lone Mountain Campus for Women was Jesuit, where St. Ignatius Parochial Elementary School is. Hate ashbury where Patricia Hurst had two homes when no one could find her for 18 months. And there she is living in, you know, Haight-Ashbury, 
across the street from University of San Francisco campus, walking distance to the Nancy and Paul Pelosi neighborhood, where I believe they were living at that time. They were also living there when Paul Stein, age 29, yellow cab taxi driver, was shot in the head with a 9mm pistol at the corner of Washington Street and Cherry Street in Presidio Heights, two and a half blocks from officer housing at the Army Base Presidio. Military intelligence, where Paul Tate, Sharon Tate's father, resided. Walking distance to the Pelosi home. Anyway, I want to bring these things up because these are connecting dots. And if you think that Sam Bankman and little Caroline Ellison were running the show at FTX, I mean, you're delusional. You've lost your mind. You're never going to find out anything important in this world. I mean, COVID will completely bamboozle you. Okay, we're real early in the COVID mandate hoax. But the thing is that uh, it is a hoax. But it's a psychological psychops. Because before MK Ultra, we had Project Artichoke. And on around that time, we also had Bluebird. We had the Bluebird program. Bluebird, Artichoke, MK Ultra, um, Manchurian Candidate Training, Mind Control, um, the whole concept of trying to make people be controlled by an authority figure. This is uh, central to pacification and control. So, um, you know, people think that MKUltra started in 1953, but they've always had some form of MKUltra for, for thousands of years. So just because they name it doesn't mean it didn't exist before. Of course, it's always existed. Whenever a minority of people attempt to control through a maritime law, martial law, bossing people around like a sheep herder does, you're going to need command and control devices. That's what MK Ultra is. That's what, that's what Operation Midnight Climax is. And then for all of you, um, for all of you aluminum oxide um, chemtrail deniers out there, you know you should you should have some more vodka because that's apparently what you live on. You know, I guess you don't get out much. Look up at the sky. You know, chemtrails are not a new concept. It's been around for decades. Okay, decades and decades, and but they're amping it up now because what I saw on Saturday. Just 72 hours ago, I'd never seen anything like that in my entire life. Initially, it started out, I see one chemtrail. Then, you know, a few weeks later, I'd see two chemtrails in going east, west, north, south. So they crisscross, right? That's not uh, vapor condensation, all right? You know, you don't have a plane, planes going up there running in strategically opposite directions over the same zip code, you know, which is a complete opposite flight pattern. You don't have planes flying in opposite flight patterns leaving chemtrails, unless it's deliberate on purpose, right? But what I witnessed on Saturday was a minimum of 16 chemtrails in a tic-tac-toe fashion, 16 cross-sections, eight going northwest, eight going north-south, uh, north-south, east-west, exactly in diametric directions. And um, I'm going to assume it was well over two to three dozen chemtrails because they dissipate slowly, they, they fan out, in about 20 minutes, and um, and I, I counted 16. So the, there, the sky was already very choked with dust particles, and so I'm going to say that there must have been another dozen that I didn't count because they fanned out. So that adds up to 28 chemtrails, and that took a couple of hours to dump out of multiple airplanes. There's no way. Uh, I think a chemtrail is done by one airplane. And so if you have 16 chemtrails, you have, you have to have 16 military planes. And I'm going to call those Lockheed, um, I forgot what they call those things, KC-135s. It's not a KC-135. It's a, it's a cargo plane that can also be adapted to dumping aluminum and barium oxide out the back. And I'm going to call those micron particles, not nano Nano is one one thousandth of a micron, and you wouldn't really be able to see much of a nanoparticle. But if you dump tons of microns out in aluminum shavings, you, you can definitely see it for 20 minutes to 30 minutes before eventually it floats down to earth and it will light up all the trees and the bushes and, and gets into the dirt and the water and the reservoirs. 
It's very, very bad. And if you have a forest fire, guess what? It'll be 10 times worse with aluminum oxide to help heat up that fire. That temperatures will be higher than organic when you add metal shavings. There's probably many motivations for dumping metal parts into our environment, and I certainly don't know what they all are, but they're doing it. And they've been doing it for over 55 years. So, you know, get a life. If you're a denier, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Just drink more vodka. That's the best thing for you. But for people that care about the world, you know, you need to pay attention and, 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 and make notes. Because here's the thing. Operation Sea Spray has been confirmed that the military planes dump toxic chemicals over the city of San Francisco and seven other cities in the San Francisco Bay Area in 1953. And that wasn't called chemtrails. That was called sea spray. I don't know what they were dumping. Maybe they were dumping aluminum oxide. I don't know. It's not a smart thing to be dumping stuff out of a plane over urban areas. And since I, I posted that video, I've got people from Queens, New York, from Yonkers, New York, telling me that there were chemtrail dumpings going on over Queens on Sunday. Okay, and I got confirmation from Billings, Montana, that they were doing it up there and that they're doing it at Mount Rainier, Seattle, Washington, and that they were doing it over Mul uh, Mulholland Highway, which is by Point Magoo and the Malibu gated colony where all the, you know, luminary Tom Hanks and John Frankenheimer, the same home there, that there was aluminum oxide being dumped over the Malibu area of Los Angeles County. And then I've got confirmation in Santa Clara County over Silicon Valley this weekend that there was aluminum oxide being dumped over Silicon Valley over um, Contra Costa County near Mount Diablo. Um, and I got confirmation on Napa County, Sonoma County, Marin County. And I got confirmation in, from um, Colorado Springs, Colorado also. So the thing is, if you think that people are hallucinating all this, the only person that's delusional is the chemtrail denier. That's the only delusional person. But that's normal because that's a confirmation. When people deny reality, like uh, face diapers do protect you and that the vaccines are safe and effective, you have the, uh, the inmates are running the, ins the insane asylum, right? That's what that is. That's, that's prisoner dilemma game. That's when you have psychological illness in society. And that's really what you have with COVID. And I have to thank the COVID operation for that because I didn't know that the majority of my neighbors were dumber than a box of hammers. But I know that now. And I don't trust any of my neighbors because they're too stupid. They're just stupid people. And you don't follow stupid people into battle because you'll get killed. That's right. That's right. So let me just tell you something about the um, Manchurian Candidate. It was a film that was directed by John Frankenheimer, a Jewish person who had uh, ROTC, United States Air Force, indoctrination. And then he moved out to Hollywood Way, to San Fernando Valley specifically, near the Sepulveda Reservoir Dam, where Francis Gary Powers was later murdered. Anyway, that's where he uh, was introduced into Hollywood through the United States Air Force and doing military educational type films in San Fernando Valley in the area of Chatworth and Van Nuys, which is, of course, the porn center of the world, right? And, um, and then he ended up ultimately becoming a big shot Hollywood director, um, working with Angela Lansbury and um, what was his name? Um, the star of the show, The Manchurian Candidate. I mean, we had Frank Sinatra in that film, and we had um, Harvey. Uh, Lawrence Harvey was the Manchurian candidate, and Angela Lansbury played his mother and his control agent for CIA. And um, Angela Lansbury was only, I think, seven years older than um, Lawrence Harvey, a British actor. And she's a British actor also. Anyway, um, Lawrence Harvey didn't, he died at age 45, so that's kind of disturbing, right? Uh, Angela Lansbury just recently died at 96, so she went a long life. But what I should tell you is John Frankenheimer was the one who uh, hosted Robert Kennedy at the now Tom Hanks home in the Malibu colony. 
1968 and um, and personally drove Robert Kennedy to the Ambassador Hotel, which is a, every bit of a one hour drive. And he drove him in his Rolls Royce Silver Cloud the third, which is very creepy and perverted. It's very creepy and perverted. And the Ambassador Hotel is kind of a dump. And there's a reason why Robert Kennedy, you know, wasn't going to stay there, had no intention of staying at that hotel and never did stay overnight in that hotel because it's a dump and it's in a lousy part of Los Angeles. And uh, a Kennedy is not going to stay in a dump like that. They're going to stay in Beverly Hills, Holmby Hills, um, Bel Air. They're going to stay in Malibu in a gated compound. The problem, though, is people that if you do stay in the places I just mentioned is those are CIA surveilled compounds. Benedict Canyon, where Sharon Tate and Abigail Folger was murdered, they were murdered in a military industrial property. Okay, there's only 107 houses in Benedict Canyon. They are all basically surveilled by the military clandestine intel services. And at least half, at least 50 of the 107 homes are consigned provisionally to operators within CIA Hollywood. That's directors, producers, that's um, people like Timothy Leary. I'll give you some names of people who had homes in Benedict Canyon. Elizabeth Montgomery, who played the, the Good Witch on um, the tele CBS television show Bewitched, starring Agnes Moorhead, who attended the Roman Polanski, Sharon Tate fake um, cocktail party um, wedding reception in London. She starred with Elizabeth Montgomery, who had a home off Benedict Canyon Drive. And Jay Sebring, not his real name, his real name is Tom Coomer, he had 9820 um, Easton Drive, where Gene Harlow's 45-year-old husband was shot in the back of the head with a 38 caliber pistol and murdered uh, in Benedict Canyon on Easton Drive off Benedict Canyon. This is where Doris uh, Duke, the Philip Morris tobacco heiress, resided literally 550 feet away from where Abigail Folger was murdered, um, you know, which they tell you it's Bella Drive. They tell you it's Cielo Drive, but it's really Bella Drive, where Doris Duke lived on Bella Drive. And before Doris Duke lived in that house, Ruth, uh, Rudy Valentino lived in that house, in Benedict Canyon. Okay, Timothy Leary had a home 30 seconds down the ice plant from where Abigail Folger was bayoneted 28 times. Okay, um, above above the house, we had um, <laughs> Anne Margaret lived there. Eddie Murphy lived there. Uh, let's see, who else we got? Um, it's a long list. Um, Patty Duke, she lived on Summit Ridge Drive, which is um, one of the canyon walls on the, on the east side. On the west side of Benedict Canyon, we had Art Linklater, who resided at 1100 um, Bel Air Road. He looked down at the swimming pool where Abigail Folger was bayoneted 28 times with this military weapon. Okay. Uh, you ever heard of Walt Disney? Yeah, he lived down the hill walking distance about 800 yards or less at 354 North Carrollwood Drive. Check it out. His home has been torn down. He had a 35,000 square foot home. Walt Disney died in 1966. So he was not around when Sharon Tate was murdered because he pre he predeceased her. But he did have a magnificent home with his own railroad with the engine named after his older brother, Roy, who was the mastermind of the Disney Studios. Roy, who lived in Toluca Lake which is over by Lockheed Martin and the Skunk Works, which takes me to the Robert Kennedy assassination, which happened on June 5th, um, 1968. It actually, the day was June 4th, Tuesday, you know, Tuesday primary for the Democratic vote to choose who's going to run for United States president. And um, they had to wait till midnight before... Um, Robert Kennedy delivered his um, acceptance speech or his victory speech of winning the delegates of the state, the CIA state of California. And uh, so he did that just after midnight, which would have been the next day. That's Wednesday. And that was June 5th. And um, after um, after his speech, rather than come off the stage and shake hands with all of his campaign workers who had been there all day. Right. 
and you know it's 12 10 a.m the next day you think you'd say hello to everybody because you're not going to stay at that hotel you're getting out of there you're going back to malibu that was his intention he's leaving so he doesn't shake hands with all of his followers he doesn't acknowledge them other than to say you know let's on to chicago and we'll win there then he walks through, he's walked through the pantry and he's escorted by none other than Thane Eugene Caesar, an employee of the Skunk Works for Lockheed, the highest security division of Lockheed in Burbank, California, where he is shot in the back of the head. Whilst everyone's focused on Suran Suran, who's like five foot two, and he's shooting into the ceiling with his 22 caliber pistol while Robert Kennedy is floored. And Robert Kennedy grabs the tie of the murderer of the person who murdered him, which is Thane Eugene Caesar. And do you know that that was a clip-on tie? And Robert Kennedy pulled the clip-off tie off Thane Eugene Caesar, a Lockheed Martin employee, a Lockheed employee who was only a security guard for the Ambassador Hell Hotel. For that night only, his one and only job for the Ambassador Hotel, for the ACE security contracted system. You check that, it's gotta be a CIA um, company, right? ACE security rentals, that they rent Thane Eugene Caesar, a Filipino gentleman that works for Lockheed. ACE, like ACE Ventura, you see a little joke there. Hollywood is always integrating, you know, key code words like they did with Three Days of the Condor, which was about Abigail Folger and the Columbia University um, Gotham bookmark that they renamed the Literary Historical Society, where Joe Turner, a.k.a. Robert Redfield, worked for a CIA front company, the Historical Literary Society, where they encoded and decoded and implanted messages in novels, you know, back when people used to read books. See, for you young people, I understand you don't read books, but... In the old days, people actually read books. Now, most of the books were, you know, stupid, phony books. They were fake books, fake history books. But still, people sat down and they concentrated, uninterrupted, no ADD, and they would read books. Now, you have to put the book down and pick it up. So, I understand it's awkward. But hopefully, you can plug into my channel and we'll just keep this thing moving. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that Lockheed is implicated in the murder of Robert Kennedy. So is Eugene... Um, Caesar, Thane Eugene Caesar, and he's also um, worked closely with Robert uh, Mayhew, who also was an executive for for um, Howard Hughes and Hughes Aircraft. So Hughes Aircraft is implicated in the Robert murder, as well as Lockheed. And also uh, General Dynamics comes in and out of the story too, so um, I'm going to include them. They're involved also with the John Kennedy assassination, which includes Johnny Roselli, Johnny Roselli, who was born in Italy, whose real name is Filippo Sacco, no, Sacco, S-A-C-C-O, Filippo Sacco, a.k.a. Johnny Roselli. Johnny had a bunch of different um, code names, Handsome Johnny and John F. Stewart, John F. Stewart, sort of like uh, David Atlee Phillips, who was a lifetime CIA employee, who was convinced that Lee Oswald murdered John Kennedy, except that he was he was Lee Oswald's control agent for the last 90 days before his death in Dallas, Texas, where David Atlee Phillips went by the name Maurice Bishop. That was his CIA fake name. Just like Tom Coomer's CIA fake name was Jay Sebring, right? Sharon Tate's CIA name was Sharon Tate. Abigail Folger's CIA name was Abigail Folger. Enos Mejia's CIA name was Enos Mejia, right? So there are some CIA agents, operatives, who use their true names. And then there's the Johnny Rosales or the Mark Lanes or Oliver Stone. Uh, or uh, let's see, who else can I think of? I mean, it's a long list. Men who change their names, you know, like Andrew... Vajka, who's a partner with Oliver Stone in the movie business, his real name is Andres Weidman. It's a Jewish name uh, from, he was born in Istanbul, Turkey, but he lives in Holmby Hills, where the, you know, Playboy Mansion and the Hugh Hefner operation was. Andrew Vajna, who's really in the porn business, 
but he does do films like Rambo 1 and 2, um, Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, Michael Douglas's um, Basic Instinct, um, Field of Dreams, and associated with Oliver Stone's uh, Morrison, Jim Morrison film, um, Mario Kassar, and um, Andrew Vajka, who's really Andres Weidman. And they had a $15 million, they had $15 million of life insurances, two policies totaling $15 million on Jose Menendez, who worked for them as a chief executive officer of Live Entertainment, which was the pornography business that they were involved with and I'm sure made most of their money in porn. But see, nobody wants you to know that Hollywood is in the porn business. But I'm here to tell you, Hollywood is in the porn business and so is the CIA because porn goes to the root of pacification and control as well as building dossiers of scandalous materials for everybody who watches porn and everybody who's in porn and all the actresses and actors. Everybody is caught up in porn and that means everybody's caught up with MK Ultra and Operation Artichoke, Bluebird, Monarch, and um, Manchurian Candidate. Except that uh, in the Kennedy assassinations, we weren't talking about brainwashing the actual murderer. We're talking about brainwashing the scapegoats, the Sirhan Sirhan, who was hypnotized um, by, I believe, a contractor in the CIA. And uh, James Earl Ray, the scapegoat for the Martin Luther King murder, who didn't do it. And the Mark Chapman, who didn't murder John Lennon. That was done by Jose Perdamo, a lifetime CIA operative from Havana, Cuba, where Jose Menendez was from. Jose Menendez didn't get into the porn business by accident. Jose Menendez didn't get out of Havana in 1959 when the communists took over by accident. He got out with the United States Navy with Jose Perdomo, probably went to Miami, and then on to their missions. Um, Jose Perdomo partnered with Frank Sturgis, who was working closely with Fidel Castro. And Jose Perdomo was working closely with General Batista and was a chief of police was a chief of police in the municipal police in Cuba at age 24. So he was fast-tracked, and he's the one at age 45 that killed John Lennon, who is 40, 40 years old. John Lennon is five years younger than Jose Perdomo, who was working as night doorman that December 8, 1980 night when John Kennedy was murdered. Murdered by a professional with guerrilla warfare training. Jose Perdomo. And by the way, just so you know, Jose Perdomo is definitely CIA because he has more aliases than David Atlee Phillips does. He has more aliases than Johnny Roselli does. He has more aliases than Sam Giancana does. Let me give you some examples of Jose Perdomo, not his real name. His real name is Jose San Yenis Perdomo. But he goes by Joaquin Sedin. Sam Genes, he goes by Sam Genes, or Jene. he um, goes by Sam Genes Perdamo, he goes by Jorge Joaquin, and he goes by Luis San Genes. That's six. That's six names. That's more than Tom Coomer had. Tom Coomer had J.C. Bring. Right? All right, anyway, so from chief of police to doorman at the Dakota where they filmed Rosemary's Baby and he puts down John Lennon, who's married to Yoko Ono, who's completely CIA all the way. She's bank. She's Illuminati from Tokyo, Japan, and her father's a private banker. You know, sort of like Enos Mejia was to... Abigail Folger, like Paul Pelosi is to Nancy Pelosi. Private banking, concealment, secret banking, right? Yoko Ono, <laughs> going to school next to the palace in Tokyo where, where the United States Army will never bomb. It's a safe zone. That's where Yoko Ono is during World War II in a safe zone. It's where she will never be harmed. And then she sent off to London, England, to see Paul McCartney, who then sends her to go see John Lennon, who she never leaves his sight again. 
until December 8th, 1980, when Jose Perdomo put him down for some disobedience oath problem, I guess. All right, so anyway, that's enough for today. I just wanted you to know that when you look into the Bay of Pigs, if you look into the Cuban Missile Crisis, you look into the uh, communist takeover of Fidel Castro, and he lived to age 90, um, it's a CIA operation, okay? It was all psychops. The, since the remembering the Maine in 1897, the United States Navy and military Marines have had an army base, Navy base, 45 miles square, 45 by 45 miles at the east end of Cuba. And not a damn thing happens on the island of Cuba, Cuba without the intelligence communities and bank complete authorization and support. So there never was a Bay of Pigs invasion. There never was a Cuban Missile Crisis, not in real life. On television, with Walter Cronkite and the fake news networks, David Brinkley, Chet Huntley, NBC, CBS. There never was a COVID uh, crisis, never, except on television, right? Or you could watch your steroid football game and you see everyone's wearing masks, except the athletes. They're not wearing face divers. Are you crazy? You can't breathe. That's unhealthy. Not to mention, they're already on a boatload of amphetamines and steroids. They don't need any more, you know, pollutants put in their bodies, all right? They take performance-enhancing drugs. They don't take performance-de-enhancing drugs. Athletes may not have graduated from college, but they're not stupid. All right. We'll get into Sam Giancana and Johnny Roselli, who were, you know, retired early, kind of like uh, William Egan Colby was, right? Although, you know, Egan Colby... William Colby was 76 years old when they whacked him. So, you know, he was in retirement, sort of, kind of. These people never completely retire. So, Lockheed, Hughes Aircraft, General Dynamics, Thane Eugene Caesar, the Skunk Works. I'm up here in my jet looking for chemtrail um, military planes. When I see one, I have Raytheon Missile Guidance uh, laser software here and I can tag the planes. They don't have any tape markings, but I can put on a QR code on them, and then I can track them down to where they land, either at an Air Force base or a private CI base, and then I've got GPS tracking on all the chemtrail um, planes, and then I am authorized to turn that over to the Committee for Public Safety, who will take it from there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.